So hi, John, thanks for joining us. Um, I just wanted to get a little perspective from you on kind of the, the history of, of charting from as you've seen it over grow over the years. Um, how did it start for you and, and then how, are th how have things changed and evolved over, over the time? Well, first of all, I have to warn you, I go back a long ways. I've been charting for about 50 years. I got into it by mistake, actually, in the late 60s. I was looking for a job on Wall Street. I had no real qualifications. And someone was looking for someone with no experience to handle it. it was a portfolio manager. He wanted someone to do his charts for him. And believe it or not, in those days, the charts were done by hand. So my job was to sit around and do the charts for this guy. And uh, so that's sort of, and I, I had a knack for it. I liked it and I, I got involved with it. And um, that's sort of how, how I got involved with charting. A couple of years later, I, I moved over to Wall Street and uh, I got a job with Merrill Lynch. I was in the uh, technical analysis department uh, for commodity trading. And there again, most of, most of the charts were done by hand. We literally had a staff of people whose job was to update our charts every day. I mean, it's hard to believe that 50 years ago, even at a, at a firm like Merrill Lynch, now things got better as years went on. We started experimenting with, uh, there was a company called CompuTrack in the 1980s that really revolutionized personal, if you use a personal computer and IBM and we could start charting and it started, started to get a little better from there. But still, when I look back, when I look at what we have now and what we had just 20, 30 years ago, it's just, it, it's just so primitive. The biggest problem we had, to be honest with you, wasn't so much the charting capability. What was the view of charting? You know, charting was still a very, very small part of, even on Wall Street, it was a very, very, most of the technical departments, even at Merrill Lynch, were very small. And so that it wasn't really um, as well recognized. Today, I mean, it's just, with, not only with the computers, but you no longer have to explain to people that technical analysis works. They know that and they're here hungry for information. So it makes the job a lot easier. Now, I know one of the books that you wrote, um, you've written many books over the years, but one of the books you wrote that spoke to me initially was The, the Visual Investor. And just the whole, the whole concept of, of charts as a visual medium for seeing the ebb and flow of, and trends uh, going into Wall Street. Talk a little bit about that. Well, I've never liked the term technical analysis. I've never understood what the technical means. I was working at CNBC at the time. I was uh, doing um, three or four shows a day for them. This was back in the 1990s. And um, we were developing quite a following of people, but they didn't really totally understand what we were doing. So we came up with the idea of why don't we write it? Because most of my books have been written for professionals. So we said, why don't we write a book for the, the average investor, you know, the mom and pop person out there who's not necessarily sophisticated in this, and let's not even call it technical analysis, let's call it visual analysis. And we said, we said we're gonna to explain to you what those squiggly lines mean. So I wrote a book for the general public. We, we, we I won't say we watered it down, but we simplified it. I just, I just, very simple, some basic charting concepts, a handful of indicators, uh, maybe a teeny bit of intermarket analysis, but just tried to make it simple and said, if you just master these few things, you can do a pretty credible job of, of, um, of charting. So I, I like visual analysis. I, I like the term because this is very visual and it's less intimidating than the word technical, which, which basically means nothing. No, it, it was a great book for me. I know it's been a great book for, for other people. It, it also just opens your eyes to that technical analysis can be as simple as you want it to be, or it can be as complex as you want it to be. Different people do it in different ways, but, but things like trends uh, are very easy to visualize on charts once, once you have the charts. And I guess, again, uh, we, we've migrated now from, from drawing by hand to the computer and now to the internet. Uh, and charts are everywhere. Absolutely. And the thing that, that really blows my mind with the charting is the fact that it's live. Even, even just a few years ago, we had, there was some very good uh, technical analysis or visual analysis platforms out there that you could use. But at the end of the day, you had to up, upload the data and then the next day, you know, now you just, you just put it on, everything is streaming. You know, you, you can call up any chart, anything you want. It's mind boggling. It could be any stock. ETF, I, I happen to be a big fan of ETFs, and that's probably where most of my work is. Um, 
you can call up any ETF and, and you can put up a, a five minute chart. It's, it's right up to date. And I know you can trade instantly and do all kinds of things. So, but I will say that as far as my overall philosophy, Chip, I still take a fairly simple approach to charting. And I guess it's just the way I was raised. I mean, I still believe you have to look at a chart. Is the trend up, is the trend down? I still look at support and resistance levels. I still draw trend lines, believe. I don't do them by hand anymore, but I, I draw trend lines. I use a handful of, you know, indicators, moving averages. Use, I probably don't use more than five or six different indicators. Um, so it still comes down to charting. That's one of the things about the chart is that, you know, you still have to know how to read it. It's one thing to have the charts presented to you as you do on stock charts, but you still have to know how to read the chart. So I think education, edu it's one thing to provide people with the, with the charts, but I think it's also important that we educate them on how to use those charts. Yeah, absolutely. Now I know another thing that you've done a lot of uh, over the past uh, couple of years has been the, um, the comparison charts and uh, looking for relationships between different indicators, different segments of the economy, intermarket analysis, that kind of thing. Yes, I, I got into intermarket analysis about, I guess about 20 years ago when I started to notice the correlations between all the different markets. You know, something simple like when the dollar goes down, gold goes up, something like that. So these correlations are, are extremely important. And even within the stock market itself, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time looking at sectors, looking at sectors, see what correlates with it, like the price of crude oil affects the energy stocks. You know, there, there are all kinds of relationships. Interest rates affect bank stocks, things like that. So correlation is very, very important to me in comparison, comparison charts. In fact, the last intermarket book that I did was written, I think about uh, five or six years ago. Uh, I used the stock charts, uh, comparison charts. And one of the revolutionary aspects of that is that they were actually in color. In the old days, <laughs> you were using comparison charts and they weren't in color, so it was very, very hard to do. So color is also maybe is very, but comparison charts to me are very, very important. And, I, and correlations and all this kind of stuff. So I place a lot of importance. So I, I think it adds a new, another dimension to technical analysis. Okay. Um, the other nice thing about technical analysis is that it works on so many different time frames. You've got, you can look at long duration charts, you can look at short duration charts. Of course, my, a lot of people nowadays, everything's on the internet, everything's, um, hurry, 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 rush. So a lot of people are looking just at the at the one minute charts or at the really, really short time frame charts. Um, but it's the longer duration charts can can help too, right? Uh, you still probably spend more of your time on the longer ones. Well, I think the people who do the intraday charting, and that certainly you can do that. I think they're more day traders probably, or very, very short term traders, you know, to look at hourly charts or five minute bars. I think most people use daily bar charts. And that, that seems to be the main time frame. If they want to really look beneath the surface, they can go to intraday charts. But I think it's important to recognize that weekly and monthly charts you know, are actually more important in some ways. Weekly charts uh, really define the major trend in the market. And we have all kinds of indicators that we can apply to those weekly charts. So the weekly chart, monthly is also to a certain extent, but you don't have to look at those all that often. But the weekly charts really, you have to look at that to really determine what is the major trend of any market you're looking at. You're always looking for any signs of the reversal. And then once you have set the trend, let's say assume the trend, then you can go to your daily charts. If the trend is up, then you would be trading from the long side on the daily chart. So the weekly chart sets the trend. And then when you get to the daily chart, you can tr tr uh, trade in the direction of that trend. But I, I'm not sure today that a lot of people look at those weekly and monthly charts as much as us old timers do, but, but it is really important to keep a long-term perspective on things. You know, I agree. Uh, I'm sure everyone wants to know this, John, so I'll go ahead and ask, how many charts do you look at each day? Um, maybe 40 or 50 charts, something like okay. that. I don't look at a tremendous number of charts. What, what I do do is, uh, Chip, is I have a, 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 a system that I work through each day. I go to the market summary page, and I look at what's what's the big arrows, the big green arrows, the big red arrows. And I look at what's going up and what's going down in a big way. And then I look at those charts. And then uh, I go to the sector summary page and then I go to the market carpets page. So I'm always looking for within, I'm looking for sectors that are leading on the upside or leading on the downside. 
So it, it's kind of a filtering system. So I, I try not to look at too many charts because then you just, but I'd say over the course of the day, I may look at 40 or 50 different charts. I just glance at them very quickly. You know, I don't analyze the charts. I'm just, you know, if I'm if I'm looking at a sector, for example, that's doing very well, and I'm looking for leading stocks, I either like the chart or I don't like the chart. So I just glance at them very quickly. But uh, I try to limit the number of charts that I look at, look at, but over the course of the day, maybe 40 or 50 different charts. I'm trying to find that one that's gonna work. <laughs> We're kind of imagining John uh, with the you know the Matrix. You're kind of looking at the at the market like they look at the Matrix in the in the movie with all the numbers yeah. coming down. It's all it's all moving parts. I'm trying to I'm looking at what the dollar is doing, what interest rates are doing, what gold is doing, what foreign stocks are doing, what sectors are doing, and trying to trying to fit it all together. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.